Hi, this is Milani Douglas from the National Museum of Women in the Arts, and we're here for another Curative Collective conversation. Today, we're here with the Artist Rescue Trust, and they have a wonderful story of how they came to be, what they do. Um, so Audrey, I'm gonna turn it over to you just to introduce yourself, tell us who you are, but then also tell us this great story. How did you all come to be? Yeah, so my name is Audrey Ullman. I'm the Community Outreach Manager for Artist Rescue Trust. Um, which basically means that I'm making sure we reach every artist. So that's that's why we're here talking today. Um, artist Rescue Trust started from a really interesting place that's also a very timely place. Um, at this time in the year, usually South by Southwest is taking place in Austin, Texas. Um, last year at this time, we were really just becoming aware of the COVID-19 pandemic. And that meant the first cancellation for South by Southwest since... Um, I want to say since September 11th. And so because of that, there were massive layoffs within our organization and um, myself as well as about a third of the staff lost their jobs. So one of those people was my now teammate. His name's Todd Hansen. He and a couple other creatives in Austin, Texas got together and started the Artist Rescue Trust just because they were so aware of how important art is, especially to our city, but because of South by, we know that it's important to the whole world and that there's not just a handful of types of art, there's an infinite amount. So Todd and a couple of his friends started Artist Rescue Trust with a very modest round of funding. Um, and then after a couple of months of that, when we saw that this pandemic was really here to stay, especially in the United States, um, we went out to find some more funding and we're lucky enough to find an amazing funder called Grant for the Web, who um, gave us the funds that we will now be dispersing out to artists. And once that round of funding was secured, I came on board with Todd to help him find every artist that there is in this country that can benefit from what we're doing. And both of us wouldn't be here if we had not been creatives that were also impacted by COVID-19. So we really have our hearts in this and um, our work has been greatly informed by what personally happened to us. And we're super excited that this is how we can help out the art community. That is absolutely amazing. Um, it's, you know, what's been so uh, fascinating about this pandemic is seeing how artists have responded to community um, and how a community we now realize or people that there's no separation because artists are community and right. community are artists, you know, so we take care of each other. So initially and even now, how, how does one apply for the grant? Um, and how much does the grant, and are there any restrictions on how that's used? Yeah, so one of the really neat things about Artist Rescue Trust is that we are operating under a system that we um, know to be called trust-based philanthropy. Mm -hmm. So when you apply on our website, artistrescue.org, and at the very top right, there's a little button that says get help. So when you apply to that, um, it's a pretty quick application. Honestly, it takes about 10 minutes and asks you a couple of basic questions. Um, but then we will be reviewing applications as they come in. And then our big round of funding will be going out um, in the coming months. And um, the requirements for that are super simple. So you basically just have to be 18 years old or older, an actively working artist who's not on unemployment. And then once you apply for that, um, we will review and get back to you. The grants are going to be $1,500 that will go out um, to artists. And we do not ask for a justification of how you're going to spend the money. On the application, we ask just, um, just to kind of see, but if somebody says groceries or if somebody says, I need a new guitar, or if somebody says, pay my studio rent, that does not change whether or not they're eligible for funding. So we know that making art is um, expensive and also that being an artist is not just buying paint, paint and pencils. So we let the artists kind of choose their own adventure and once they receive the funding, we trust that they're gonna use it in the best way possible. And I think that's what's so wonderful about having artists administrating things, you know, because you all as artists probably know what is needed. Is, is, did Absolutely. you find, how did you find your experience as an artist 
really directing your ability to to like meet the needs of your audience. Yeah, I mean, through just working at South by Southwest and putting that event together, um, you know, Todd worked there significantly longer than I did, but I was raised in Austin, Texas, so it's been a really big part of my life, um, my entire life. South by is only one year older than me. And through that, we learned that there is a thousand million different ways to make art. I mean, one of the stories I tell is that one of my panelists last year who didn't end up getting to speak because of COVID, they, they're they artists, but they wouldn't have fallen into a lot of grant opportunities because of the really interesting work they did, which was that they made death metal using AI software. Wow. So they fell into neither tech nor art categories completely, but they still made you know, really incredible stuff that was not only beautiful, interesting to look at, but educational um, and got people interested in STEM as well as the arts. So we saw that every single day. And then when COVID hit, even for us as creatives, you know, on the event planning and orchestration side, we saw that it's not as simple as, you know, okay, here's some money, go out and buy something that line item connects to your art. It's just not. And that's what we've been finding with our applications coming in is, you know, we see these incredibly talented, gifted artists from all over the country. And, you know, for them to continue to be the vibrant, colorful people that they are, sometimes that means I need to pay my daycare bill. Yeah. And we're not going to not make them eligible or qualified for our funding because we can't directly say Artist Rescue Trust made this piece of art, you can link it, whatever. We just want to lift people up in the ways that we know humans need to be lifted up. That's phenomenal. And 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 what has the response been from the artists that you all, because because you already have one run of funding, correct? Yes, we did. Okay, good. Yeah, so we've had some smaller rounds of funding where if we get donations that come in more from, um, you know, small private donors, so think like, you know, a Giving Tuesday campaign, we've been able to get out some grants through that. And it has been absolutely, I mean, inspiring makes it sound less than. It blows me out of the water, the different types of artists that have found us. Mm -hmm. And what we have seen has really affirmed that the trust-based approach is the right way to go. Um, we recently funded a henna artist mm -hmm. who was this just awesome woman who was going out and making traditional henna and, you know, she wouldn't have fallen into a lot of other categories. And what she needed was just basic human necessities. So she couldn't continue to do what she did without being able to feed herself and her family. So it's been really affirming through that. And also we've seen this really wide variety of applications come in, which is exactly what we want. We are trying to make sure that we're hitting every discipline um, you know, every state, every demographic, and we've been seeing that in our application. So it is really, really exciting for us. And we are really looking forward to releasing this next round of funding. I was so excited to hear about the details of uh, the Artist Rescue Trust, Audrey, because um, like you said, so many people fall out of the category and the project that we're working on, or some of the funds are restricted. So yes. the project that we're working on, Reclamation, it's talking about food and the history of food, but also the memories um, around food. We've had some very interesting conversations about people accessible, people's accessibility mm -hmm. to food. And there are not a lot of grants that you can say, I need money for groceries. You know, I need money for food. I need money to maybe, you know, be able to grow some food to maybe set up my yes. own garden. Um, because we know a lot of artists are, are finding different ways to take care of themselves. So this is exciting that this is $1,500 that's unrestricted. Um, and especially about childcare as a mom, like, a, you know, who that is a huge part of right. what kind of time I have for art. This is great. Well, and something that, you know, as a mom, and I'm not a parent myself, but I am a woman, we talk about all the time these hidden taxes of being a woman existing in the world. And that's really why Todd brought me on board is because there are so many groups that just aren't hit for this kind of stuff. They're missed in every capacity 
or their needs are not fully understood by a society that's still very patriarchal, very white, very cisgender. And so, you know, we want to not have that blind spot and understand that even as a white woman myself, that there are things that I may not need that someone else may need. I'm a hearing impaired person myself. I wear um, hearing aids in both ears. And my teammate Todd would never understand if I put on a grant thing that I needed to buy batteries for my hearing aid so that I could continue to make music. But we don't wanna hold people back just because we don't understand where they're coming from. And childcare is something that if you're not a parent, you may not see it as a priority, but that's not our job to determine. And also that the application is simple. So a yes. lot of times, you know, you have an application for it. Sometimes it's even $500 and all everything helps. But if you have to spend, you know, put a six page application, you know, that's complicated and listing all these things, it can be a deterrent. It is. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that was really important as we were putting together our application is we want artists to be artists. We don't want them to be professional application filler outers. If we're asking you to spend four hours in front of your computer, that's half a day that you could have been out creating. Mm -hmm. Or that's half a day that even, you know, if you can't do your art, that you might be doing a gig so that you can meet your basic needs. And we don't want to take that away from the people that we're trying to help. It can end up being a little bit um, like, I don't know what the right word for it is, but yeah, I mean, when you're asking for a small amount of money, yes, everything helps, but also realistically, you need to be aware of what you're asking of the people and make sure that you actually have a reason for why you're putting all that stuff in there. So we didn't put anything on our application that we don't actually read. So I actually check the applications that come in every day, Todd and I teamwork it, but right now I've been managing and I read every line of the application. So we don't do that thing where it's like, hey, can you put a link and then also type out your job description? If you put it, we're clicking it. So we want people to be able to get in, get out and get back to creating. This is fantastic. Um, and getting up to, to set up because I, I feel like more people, uh, if they can set up something like the Artist Rescue Trust, they should because of all of our networks are so different. So if there were, you know, ways that more people could have their network over here and another network, what was something that you would say is um, in, in getting it set up and being able to serve people, what helped you all help other people? I would just say that in general, it's having conversations like this. It's that COVID-19 has really humbled a lot of people and um, it's made a lot of people aware of those blind spots that I was talking about before. And so where people may not have seen necessity, um, they now are acutely aware because of COVID-19. And so when we are reaching out to people um, like National Museum of Women in the Arts, it is so clear and obvious that there's a need and everybody really is all hands on deck right now. And so that's been super empowering for us, but also, you know, we're set up to make it easy to share. So when we reach out to folks like y'all, um, sorry for y'all, I'm down in Texas, but- uh, oh, you welcome that, it's okay. <laughs> okay, great. Um, when, we, when we reach out to folks like y'all, it really just helps that everybody understands the need and that we've also set it up so that there aren't these weird restrictions that make it hard to share between groups. So, you know, if we're talking with y'all, it works. Um, we have started working with an indigenous foundation that reaches out to um, indigenous tribes mm -hmm. by hand. So where things aren't accessible, this small foundation is going out and telling people and giving them pieces of paper. So what has helped us the most is that absolutely everyone out there is trying their best to keep the arts alive and is approaching it with just ferocity of compassion and excitement for helping out the artists that make our world so special. That's really been the biggest thing. That's fantastic. And, all, you know, that the part about conversations, just the fact that we are in a space where things have slowed down and everyone is at home. I think so many amazing conversations have happened. Yes. That There's I'm something. really excited to see, you know, as things open up. I think there's some important conversations that are that will probably transform what everything looks like from now. 
Definitely. And I think, you know, with COVID and with working from home for all of us, um, what has changed, especially for me, is that because I'm working from home, there is a level of vulnerability and trust that you have to have to literally let people into your home. You're in, you're in my house right now. And so when we're speaking to artists or when we're talking to other groups that are like minded, we're coming at it from a place of, you know, we're neighbors, we're visiting, we're sitting on each other's couches. And with that comes a realness that you sometimes don't get when you get an Outlook email. And by sometimes, I mean, almost all the time. All the time. So, you know, that and just the trust, you know, we we give our grants, we trust that people are going to use it. And that has been the way that partner organizations has have also felt to us where, you know, we trust each other to do the right thing, get it out there as best we can. And it has been absolutely game changing that everyone's come to the table from a place of trust and love and vulnerability. And uh, I do have a few more questions, but I want to put the information up telling people how to reach you and contact you. And even while you're listening to this interview, if you could pop open another screen so that you can still hear us, go to the website and look at it. The, the application is really, really, really easy. It's so transparent. Um, and you're able to see like how you're able to, to sign up. So even while you're listening to us, you could be signing up for this $1,500 unrestricted grant um, to be a part of the next rollout of funding. And um, and then you could be a part of the story as well. And I'm hoping that people will will definitely do that. Um, yeah. Yeah, that, that would be amazing, right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. If I open up the applications after this and I see a couple that came in while we're talking, it would just make my day. And you can. Yeah. That's the great that's thing is you could finish your application before we're done talking. You definitely could. It's it's such, it was such, I was so pleased to look at that application. I was like, this is how it should be. <laughs> you know, and like as a creative person, before I started working with Artist Rescue Trust, I was out on my own too. And when you're, you know, even applying for jobs, if somebody wanted to work in a museum or you're applying for grants, it's like, I got to get back out there and apply to as much stuff as I can. I can't be sitting here doing this 15 page application that you're just going to filter through AI and weed out anyways. But we made our short because we got real people reading them. And those real people are me and Todd. So that's so awesome to hear. And then also, so let's talk about like when a person does receive the grant, um, mm -hmm. because this is another part that's so interesting. You apply for some of these grants and then the process of just getting the money. Yeah. You know, just So how does that work for you all? Yeah. So um, the way that our funding is chosen is that we basically qualify people yes or no. And so if we go through your application, we see that you're over 18, you're not receiving unemployment, you're an artist trying to make their way, you're marked qualified. We don't do a points-based system. We just say qualified. Then when we are choosing the people that we will fund, we use a random number generator that picks the applications so that it is blind from us. Um, but that's why representation is so important because of its, you know, randomness. There truly is no random. And if we don't have everybody represented in that pot, then we're going to, you know, be funding the same type of things over and over again. So we, we don't think that it's within our right to say who deserves more or less. And so that's why we didn't use a points-based system. We say you're qualified or you're not, and then a random generator picks out who gets the funding. So then once um, people are selected and will receive funding, the ask from us is actually very minimal. So our funder, Grant for the Web, is a really cool organization. Um, and they are focused on teaching people how to monetize their product on the web. Um, so much of what we ask artists to do when it comes to monetization is ads, you know, banner ads, pre-roll on YouTube, um, anything like that, because their actual, you know, using music an example, their pay price for each play of their song on Spotify is almost nothing, you know? So, what we are focused on is teaching people how you can use the web to monetize what you do and especially relevant during COVID times. Um, then make money from your art, from your computer in a way that we kind of aren't as it is. Mm -hmm. So it's a very minimal ask. There's no, 
you know, we don't have crazy tests or again, a big ask. The whole idea is that people can sit down, learn something and then go out and do their art. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. That's amazing. Well, I am delighted to hear that you all are working on this, that this is something that continues. I hope it may be something that even continues um, after yeah. COVID. What are, well, what are your plans after this happens? Where do you all, or when things open back up, what do you guys want to, where are you taking this? Well, that's a great question. And a lot of what we do has been informed by that we, we don't really know when this is going to end and go back to normal. So we haven't put the cart before the horse on that. We are taking it day by day because we know we still have a problem now. So when it comes to what we're going to do when things open back up, you and I both know that there's still a great need for support for our artists. So what that looks like for us, we don't know yet because we are really focused at this problem at hand that it still looks like it's going to be a while for us. And that's a long time of people not paying rent, not buying groceries, not having their kids in daycare. So we haven't thought crazy far into the distance. What we're focused on right now is getting money into the hands of artists spring, summer. And then once things open back up, we'll have to kind of take it as it comes because this was created from a great necessity and that's how we continue to thrive and function. Um, when COVID isn't as big of a threat, I don't think it'll change that there's still going to be a great number of artists that are unsupported and need some financial backing. So we'll have to see how that goes when uh, the time comes. And I can't wait for that day to be here when we're thinking about that. But until then, we're focusing on the need at hand and it's very basic. Yeah. And I, and I'm glad that you all have that approach and this is what I want to say to other large institutions. This is why it's great to partner and work with smaller groups and small organizations because you all are able to pivot in a way that a larger institution cannot. Exactly. And so, you know, so it's 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 uh, where we have to do a lot of planning out ahead for us to be able to connect our audiences with people that are able to meet their immediate needs, um, be able to support them in immediate outside of the realm of arts. These are important relationships and ways that um, I'm glad that we're able to engage our community. So that that balance is great. You Absolutely. Know, and I'm so grateful yeah. that we were able to work with y'all for that reason. Um, like I said, we're a small team. And with that, that there's only a couple people on the boat, it's really easy to turn the rudder. So we are really grateful that there are, you know, tugboats out there. There are these cruise ship behemoth organizations um, that can help pull us to shore and get us where we need to be. But when it comes to agility, you can't beat having a really small crew. So, you know, it's it's a, a lot like a homemade recipe. It's a little bit handmade and heartfelt. Sometimes there's some improvisation that comes with it. But at the end, we're really proud of the product that we're serving up. And we're looking forward to literally putting food in the mouths of artists. That is wonderful. Well, I am hoping that you will see some more applications. Um, we have an amazing audience of women, uh, primarily women, but definitely uh, across all genders that are champions of women, that are really into action, that are about yes. community organizations, and that are artists that are, that are serving their communities in interesting ways and would be perfect candidates for what you all are doing. So Absolutely. I'm hoping that they are hearing this and applying um, and seeing that this is, it's simple. It's a $1,500 chance, you know, for you all to be able to receive this kind of grant. If you get it, it's unrestricted. The process um, is, it's very equitable. Um, so, you know, apply. Apply, yeah. apply, 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 apply. Make sure that you find time to apply. And one last cool thing I want to tell you about the way that we're doing applications mm -hmm. is that once you apply, you're in our pool. So once you apply and you're qualified, you're in our pool of people to pick from. So we're not running this right now as if you apply after March 15th, then you're only eligible for this small amount. Even if an artist doesn't get picked for this next round of funding, 
but we receive a philanthropic gift from a private foundation, um, they're still in the pool and they're still qualified. We don't throw that application out just because they didn't get picked for this one. Mm -hmm. So if they don't get funded on this round, it doesn't mean never. It just means not right now. And that's really important to us. We're, we're Again, this goes back to we're not going to ask someone to come out and fill out the same application again. You're qualified. You're here. We know who you are and we've got your number. So we want to make sure we give people as many chances as they can to get that money. So if nothing else, qualify, just sign up and be a part of the Artist Rescue Trust community. Exactly. And you'll be on the ride with them and see where it goes um, and, and see what happens. And also, if you all do get the $1,500 and maybe make one recipe, maybe one, you know, something that you're making, please share it as a part of our reclamation um, portal. We are hoping, we are opening up the portal again. We'll be sharing dates. Um, and so that you know, Audrey, we had people from our audience submit recipes. So we have a wide group of people that are about a part of our art exhibition that's online. They submitted mm -hmm. recipes, family stories, pictures. Oh. Um, we have some amazing, amazing stories. Um, very intergenerational, um, very, you know, uh, like different genders that are submitting. And so um, one amazing. question, and, and we're hoping that this next time that also a lot more men submit. Um, so yes. we're hoping that people can be a part of it and share their stories with each other because this is where communities made at tables around mm -hmm. food um, and meeting each other's needs. And Audrey, it is great to be in community with you. Likewise. And with the Artist Rescue Trust. Likewise. And I have to say that I really loved on y'all's Instagram, there was a piece that was, um, it looked like an eight part pie and you could pull out each piece and unfold it. I absolutely love that. It's art in a thousand different ways. So yes. I'm super, super excited. And if we happen to see some crossover of artists that use their funding to then make and submit a recipe, that would be just another level. It would be another level. And we love levels to it. So yeah. yes, we'll find as many as we can. Audrey, thank you so much for joining us today. I know you're a small team with uh, with probably a small amount of time. So we appreciate um, you joining us and sharing this with us. And thank is there you so much. Anything else that you have that you wanted to tell us or anything? Um, I just can't express my gratitude enough to y'all for being interested in working with us on this and spreading the word. Um, it's so important to us that, like I said, we we get in touch with every artist. That means women, that means people of color, that means people of different physical abilities. Mm -hmm. So it it can't be done without groups like y'all. So thank you so much for having me. And to anyone listening, if you go to artistrescue.org, you can find our very simple application. Um, those all come to real people. And if you have questions, we have emails on our website that you can reach out to um, whoever can best answer your question. But at the end of the day, you got real people on the other end of the computer and we're here to help. I love it. Thank well, you Audrey, so much. Thank you. And um, we will continue to follow you and make sure that you all go to Reclamation Nimwa. I'm sorry, reclamation.nimwa.org. And also check out the exhibit and also go to the artisttrust.org and see about applying for their application. And thank you, Audrey. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. You're welcome. You're welcome. And thank you, everyone who's um, out there attending.